Okay, today we are going to start our macroeconomic policies. Uh, as we said in our previous lessons that there are macroeconomic objectives of the government. One of them is the national income growth. Another is full employment or low unemployment. Third one is the price stability. And then balance of payment, equilibrium. And then the last we said stable exchange rate. Stability in the exchange rate of the country. And one more thing that is uh, some of the books they are writing the redistribution, fair distribution of income in the economy. So when these macroeconomic objectives of the government are not achieved, like economic growth target is not achieved, economy is either overperforming or underperforming it. So this will become a problem for the government to have a stabilization in the economy. Sometimes it happens there is a boom in the actual GDP growth rate than the potential level or sometimes there is going to be a recession. So national income growth rate can also show us the fluctuations when the government targets are not achieved. On the other side, government objective is that to achieve full employment or to reduce unemployment. So when government is unable to achieve this objective, this will become a macroeconomic problem. Like unemployment is said to be the macroeconomic problem of the country. Whereas prices, if they become unstable, they are continuously, persistently increasing. So the real income of people will decrease and their cost of living will also increase. So we say this thing. When these domestic objectives, macroeconomic objectives of the government are not achieved, they will become the macroeconomic problems. And, and the two of them is the external objectives. One is the balance of payment equilibrium and the last one is the stable exchange rate. So what is the task of an economist? If you are studying economics, so at macro level, the task of economist is what it is to achieve these macroeconomic objectives to design the macroeconomic policies in such a way that the objectives of the government at macro level should be achieved this is the main thing why the economic managers to whom we say the economists the chief economists they will design the ministry of planning ministry of finance or sometimes the central bank of the country, they will design the macroeconomic policies in order to achieve the macroeconomic objectives or to resolve or to provide the solution for the macroeconomic problems. So one of those policies is the fiscal policy. Okay, it will influence, it will influence, it will influence aggregate demand influence in aggregate demand in the economy, aggregate demand in the economy by using its tools, okay, tools are what, tools of fiscal policy, what are those tools of fiscal policy, one of them is the government spending, like these are the development expenditures which will create employment opportunities for the people of the country. Another government tool is the transfer payments. Transfer payments, they are paid to the vulnerable groups like unemployment benefit, like child care benefit, which is universal, everyone is entitled to that, or pension. Okay. So these benefits are also very delayed, they are not the development, they are only the transfer of funds from one sector of the country, one sector of the people to the other. Okay. No corresponding output has been produced against these payments. And the third rule of fiscal policy is the taxes. Both direct and indirect taxes they are used by the government in order to influence agriculture demand in the economy or sometimes government is also using these taxes to influence the aggregate supply in the economy as well. 
So Texas can be used to influence both regulated and value supply. But right now we are talking about fiscal policy, so it is designed by the Ministry of Finance of the federal government of the country. So there are mainly two types of fiscal policy. There can be the two types of fiscal policy. One is called what? Automatic stabilizer. Automatic stabilizer. Another is called discretionary fiscal policy. Automatic stabilizer or discretionary fiscal policy. Automatic stabilizer means what? Now the government is using one of the tax to stabilize the economy by itself. For example, government is using progressive taxation as automatic stabilizer. You might be knowing, I can wait to this concept of business cycle. If you remember, this is the potential path, trend path. This is the path of actual GDP around the potential paths or trend path. Here we find a boom where actual GDP is more than potential, aggregate demand is higher than aggregate supply, long run aggregate supply. So it is facing inflationary pressure, economy is overheating, it has more aggregate demand and here we find a slum or recession. Recession means the aggregate demand is falling, declining decline in the economy where unemployment is present. Okay? So in order to stabilize this economy, if government is using progressive taxation, so during boom taxes will automatically increase. People are earning too much, so as a progressive tax at higher level of income, they have to pay more taxes. So when the taxes are paid more, so their disposable income will fall and aggregate demand will start increasing. And this thing will automatically stabilize the economy. Boom will be automatically removed when we are using progressive taxes as automatic stabilizer. A during depression or recession, the economy wants to recover. So when income level of people is lower, so they have to pay less taxes. Okay? Tax revenue will decrease and on the other side, government will increase its spending because returning from home, government was having a budget surplus. Okay? When economy was cooling now, it was having what? Budget surplus and that budget surplus will be used to increase spending during the recession to recover from the economy, uh, from this situation. Okay? So we say automatically economy will be stabilized. So there can be cyclical, cyclical deficits which are arising in the budget of the economy. Like there can be the budget surplus, there can be balanced budget, there can be budget deficit. So this is where there is boom, there is tax revenue. So we say there is budget surplus and during the recession tax revenue will be lower than the government spending and there is budget deficit. But these things, surplus will change to deficit and deficit will change into a surplus. Automatically this cyclical deficit can be removed without any government effort. Whatever the surplus is uh, generated by the government during the boom automatically it will be used to offset the deficit during the recession. Sir, that the government spending will be higher? No, government spending will be lower, taxes will be higher during boom, but in recession spending will be higher than the taxes. So this is called cyclical deficit. So this is how 
government is using automatic uh, progressive taxes as automatic stabilizer to stabilize the economy's fluctuations and it may rise the cyclical deficit which will be automatically corrected no need of extra effort by the government to do it now discretionary fiscal policy is that in which government is deciding government is deciding how much to spend on development how much taxes have to be collected from the economy for example it has two uh, two types the discretionary fiscal policy one is reflationary fiscal policy reflationary fiscal policy or it is also given a name expansionary fiscal policy okay now the second type of discretionary fiscal policy is deflationary fiscal policy or contractionary fiscal policy do you know contraction where government spending is reduced than the taxes okay now i am going to show you <coughs> according to the government objective government will design the discretionary fiscal policy the planners of the country economic managers they will design a policy problem is to reduce unemployment to reduce unemployment in the country what government will do government will design first of all a reflationary fiscal policy okay when target is to reduce unemployment so what happens government spending will increase or taxes will decrease when government spending is increased so taxes are decreased so you can say disposable income of people will increase disposable income increases and when disposable income increases aggregate demand will increase in the economy people will increase their spending and more and you can say actual economic growth will take place what happens actual economic growth will take place and you can find over here unemployment will fall fall okay if this policy is designed during the short run it can have inflationary pressure building up how during the short run the shape of aggregate supply curve is upward sloping real gdp that is why and here i am taking price level okay this is short run aggregate supply curve and now aggregate demand has increased during the short run you can see increase in price so this is what i wanted to say along with increase in real gdp the general price level is also increasing so we see over here when unemployment is falling inflation is going to increase this is the policy conflict what it is contradiction like one of the macro economic objective is achieved by using this policy but other one is not a thing that is harm that now it is going to have a different way clear so due to increase in inflation during the short run people can switch over to imported goods okay imports can also increase export competitiveness price competitiveness will fall and trade account deficit can also rise now if i see during the long run when there is Massive unemployment present. The shape of aggregate supply curve will be like this. Okay, this is the real GDP, which is Y, and this is the price level. All right. So long run aggregate supply curve is like this. All right. So when the economy is facing a recession, so aggregate demand is here. Government spending aggregate demand is shifted rightward. All right. So without changing the price.
price level, without changing the price level, government is able to increase the real GDP and it's also able to reduce unemployment in the country. How will, how will it be able to achieve unemployment to decrease? Because increasing aggregate demand will increase the labor force demand in the labor market. And any job offer during the recession to the workers will bring them to the workplace. Clear? So when aggregate supply is increasing, it is on the rising trend. And now, now we find this reflationary system policy. So here price level will also increase along with the increasing real GDP on the rising part. And if it is going to the, on the vertical part, then only prices will increase, no change in the output. But keep it in mind, the development expenditures, they will also have to increase the productive potential in the future. Like if government is constructing dam, right now it is creating employment. But in future, the productive potential, this will affect the long run aggregate supply as well. The fiscal measures which are adopted for long term projects, so they will increase the productive potential as well. Okay? So this is how, by using this policy, Reflation the fiscal policy, government can reduce unemployment. And you can also see, government spending is more than taxes, so it creates what? Budget deficit. What does it create? Budget deficit is there. What it is? Budget deficit. Now, government needs to finance this budget deficit either by privatization, because taxes are lower than the government spending, or borrowing from the commercial banks or from the central bank and if still budget deficit is present then government go for external sources to finance the budget deficit it will borrow from world bank or asian development bank or any lender who can provide funds for the development projects clear so budget deficit will rise it will increase the borrowing environment borrowing There can be two types of debts. One is called internal debt, another is called external debt. Both are collectively called the national debt of the country. So internal debt is that when government has borrowed money from the domestic sources and when we sum them up with the external borrowing, so that will become the total national debt of the country. So government objective is also there to control this budget deficit, it should be as minimum as it is possible. It should not be going beyond the 4% of the GDP of the country. If it is increasing, going to 8%, 9% of the GDP, then it will be difficult to be managed in the long run. Okay, now please be attentive as time is running out. We see if government aim is to reduce inflationary pressure, what government will do? The opposite will be the case, deflationary fiscal policy will be designed where government spending will fall, taxes will increase. When taxes are increasing, disposable income of people will decrease. And aggregate demand will shift downward, and due to falling aggregate demand, this process of prices will be decreasing. But at the cost of unemployment, when aggregate demand is decreasing, so what happens? Budget surplus will take place because of more taxes than the government spending. So this is called structural deficit. Previously I talked about cyclical deficit. This is the structural deficit. Cyclical deficit, here I say, I say this is the real GDP. Real GDP here is government spending and taxes. This is government spending and this is the tax. So at lower level of the cyclical uh, deficit is high at lower level economies in the session. This is the budget deficit. Here it is the balanced budget, but at high level of income, we see there is going to be budget surplus. This is the cyclical deficit. Cyclically, it is changing from deficit to surplus, surplus to deficit. Okay? 
So we find this thing to fiscal policy is used to achieve the macroeconomic objectives of the country. But keeping in mind, all macroeconomic objectives cannot be achieved by a single fiscal policy. If government is designing it to achieve price stability, there will be a new plan. And if it is deciding to achieve, uh, to reduce unemployment or to achieve full employment, there can be inflationary pressure in the economy. And budget deficit and surpluses, they can also arise. Alright, so these are how the fiscal policy is working in the economy by using its tools. So we concluded today's lesson that fiscal policy is actually aggregate demand side policy which will affect aggregate demand in the economy, it will influence by using the tools of government spending and taxes. Clear? And tomorrow if we will be inshallah doing monetary policy which is also having influence on the aggregate.